You come when I'm out Like a lion and a snake Roaring loud with every lie For my joy Only a taste
presence of God. Amen. Amen. The tangible presence of God. It's not just like it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like heaven on earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like you.
The presence of God in our lives brings heaven to the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Greet somebody and say, His presence is heaven to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, the same, I didn't tell you that. Stand back up. Turn around and look at somebody and say, Today I will receive from heaven. What about you? Now answer them. Yes. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Well, we're glad to see you this morning. God is good all the time. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, we're glad to see you this morning. And uh, real quick, um, I, I'm going over to see Karen. Well, actually, we're, we're planning on going together, but this afternoon, Janie and I. And, uh, but they posted this week. The doctors are now calling her the miracle lady. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we knew that. We knew that. Yeah. But now they're co they're confessing it. Uh, they're uh, they're supposed to start the next surgery next Friday, and they've moved it to tomorrow because she's just going. She everything she's doing is progressing so fast, and so now they call her the miracle lady. Yes. Hallelujah! Praise God. Well, glory to God. Faith. Amen. And I tell you, you know, people going and God giving the right word, uh, producing faith in the atmosphere. Glory to God. Amen. Laying hold of that. Glory to God. See, and I believe that, um, well, you know, you've heard the stories of people coming out of comas or whatever. And they knew people. They knew that people had been in the room with them and all that. I believe our spirits can connect with faith even when we our consciously can't do it. Because right, we're spirit beings. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, I know a, a story of a, of, a, of a lady a number of years ago. Which, you know, she was um, considered by many in our circles a true prophetess. She's gone home to the Lord since then. And um, she, was, she was ready to go home to the Lord. She had lapsed into a coma and uh, was at the hospital. And I said, you know, I, I'm not, you know, when people like that, they're, just, they're asleep, they're ready to go. But um, was sitting in bed, laying in bed. And popped up out of that coma and said, "Go find so and so. I had to give. I had to tell him something." Oh, wow. There's another minister in that town, and they went. It took them like three hours to find him and get him up to the hospital. And she's sitting up there talking to people and carrying on with him and all this kind of stuff. And he came and she said, and she began to give him the word of the Lord. And after after that, and laid back down, she went right back in the coma and went home to do the Lord. Not not long afterwards. Her spirit, what made her body wake up yeah. long enough to give that last word. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, before I leave, I got one more thing to do. Hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're glad to have you. Uh, don't forget to come out on Wednesday nights for our Wednesday night. And I forgot to bring the books for those of you who haven't to come. I got them. I got y'all one. All right. Hallelujah. Set. Glory to God. And um, anyway, um, Wednesday night Bible study on the authority of the believer. And uh, we're already getting testimonies about stuff happening when people using their authority. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, so God is good amen. all the time. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. We, we walk in the realm of authority through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. That's the head of the church and we're his body. Praise God. And, you know, there's just, I'll be honest with you, it's not that we're super teachers on Wednesday night. It's the material you're studying and reading and 
and so forth is what's, what's producing that, that in, in everybody. So glory to God. Uh, at this time, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, if you're giving with cash, with any other means, you don't need one, but if you're giving with cash, hallelujah, we got them out there, a few more, because i got to get some more made this week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all love Jesus? Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to go ahead and give you our next financial project. Uh, hallelujah. And we're going we're gonna to do this real soon. Is we, we need a keyboard. And we, now we got a piano in, the, in storage, but it's not one you can pick up and, and, and transport. I mean, just, it weighs, what, 100 pounds, Dick? That, that, uh, that uh, rolling piano? That rolling piano weighs, I mean, weighs, with the uh, stand on it, that weighs about 100 pounds probably? Yeah. yeah, yeah, at least, at least, yeah, and uh, it, it's not portable, okay, it, it's, it's got the heavy stand that's connected to it, it's just not a portable piano, and so um, to drag that in and out every Sunday is just not smart, it's just too much, so um, we are looking at a, what they call, a, I guess they call them now triggers or controllers, and uh, it's with semi-weighted keys and a full-size keyboard. We have we have the um, midis, so we you know. Um, but with the, for that the stand and some and, and sustain pedals and stuff like that, we're looking at about seven fifty neighborhood. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. And, uh, we, and this is one of the things you know we we could um, we're gonna look at setting up an account with Sweetwater and see if we just can't order it and have it. And then, and then pay it over time, and you, we just take up offerings, or if somebody just, God speaks to you, and you want to come and give the whole thing, go ahead. Hallelujah, and we'll pay cash for it. But, um, you know, we, we need, there's some things we want to do worship-wise, that we do worship-wise, that, that we need a keyboard. Right. That, we, that we're not limited to. Guitar is great, and, you know, the bass, you know, and this has got bass, we got the drum machine, but if we had a keyboard, there, there's some songs we could do that would be better done that way. Okay? And um, so we want to we be able to, to broaden and then if God sends the keyboardist in, Shanda. Amen. 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 Got to play. I got something to play. Hallelujah. But Nathan, Nathan can do both, you know, for you know for worship songs. He can he can do the piano, he can run over and do some stuff for keyboard. So uh, we want to have that available. Amen. Okay? Um, praise the Lord. So that's just keep that in the back of your mind. We're gonna be looking into it. We've already kind of uh, had Dick scope out some of the the better options for us. And we can designate that on square cash. Yes, if you if you go, I want to give three hundred towards it right now, or a hundred, or five, or three dollars, or fifty cent. You know, you can do that on square cash. Just designate it. Because if you don't designate it, all right. If you don't designate it, it doesn't get done. All right. It, it goes it goes in the general. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. That's why I said hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. That's our next thing. And I think it really it will help us. It'll enhance some things. It'll give us some songs that we can do. That There's some songs I tell Nathan, I want to do this. He says, I can't do that on the guitar. We really can't do that on the guitar. Uh, we need keyboards to do that. Okay, just the way that, the way to fill it and to make it right. You just can't to do the, the uh, and guitar players understand that. All right, there's, there's things that you can and can't do. Hallelujah. All right, and there's things you can't do on a keyboard. I mean, there's just, you know, so the, the limitations of it. So that, there we go. And if you're out there watching us right now and you want to help us uh, get that, just send it square cash right here or PayPal it to the church and designate it uh, keyboards. Well, no, it's a controller with the, the scissors. And we understand that. But, you know, they are a keyboard. It is a keyboard. And we, you know, we have to get semi-weighted. You can't. That's a piano. Piano, yeah, yeah. Basically what it is, piano. Um, but they're semi-weighted keys, which means, you know, they're not the, the plastic things that just flop up and down, you know. Because people who play want to have some feel of weight to it. Okay? Hallelujah. So. All that. So if you're watching us right now and you want to be a part of that, uh, get, your, get your credit card out, go to Square Cash, you know, or go to your PayPal account, send them in, designate it, please, to keep paying them. And, um, and anything that comes in over, um, then what we you know may go to the general fund or we may, but that's what I know. If it comes over, or, you know, we'll do something with it, you know, but um, we, want, we need to get this in. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, this is a general time offer, Lord. And if you want to give into this, you can, you can stipulate it on your envelope or, you know, uh, write two checks and designate the second one. <laughs> Make sure you designate it, all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe and offering that the people are blessed and they walk in prosperity and the fullness of the blessings of God in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody agree with that by saying, 
Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and see that, brother. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. And then some. Amen. amen. Glory, glory, glory. All right. Well, we're already getting money in for the keyboard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all guys, just y'all are awesome. Amen. Get her done. That's right. Get her done and get it in here. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise God. All righty. Praise God. All right, children's church, preschool, you guys are dismissed. Those that are awake. <laughs> Got one that took, that took the dive. He's out. Gone. If I look like I'm moving a little slow this morning, I am. We were... We finished putting up the fence in the backyard yesterday, and that's the up and down, up and down. I mean, you know, I, now listen, I, I've gotten to place, I don't hammer anymore. I got a pneumatic nailer. But still, there's, you know, still a lot of standing, bending, cutting, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but we got her done, and the dogs are happier than hogs and slop. Yeah, they're out there playing in the backyard. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, uh, Praise God. Let's, you know, thank y'all for being with us and standing with us for Karen. And that, in fact, she is the miracle lady. And uh, they told her, actually, I think the last thing I said was, um, she probably won't be, what, dunking, doing, doing a high jump. But she's going to walk and run and do about anything else she wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I expect her to do the high jump. Amen. They, we're going to set the bar higher. No pun intended. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we started last week, and then, of course, got, um, you know, in, in the, uh, went off a little bit in a, in a different vein than my notes, but saying on the same subject matter, on living from the life within. Praise God. So let's go back again to the base scripture here from Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 through 27. And if, if you're wondering, about, there's nothing wrong with my iPad. I'm just having a, a, a retro feel these days. Paper notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you still won't use. Don't <laughs> 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 we off the paper notes now. All right, the, the, the mics cost too much to drop. That was a drop the mic moment. <laughs> Bam, there you go. Well, you confess it, you can have what you say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 through 27. Paul writing to the church at Colossae says this. He says, Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. To, um, even the mystery, which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. And this is, remember, this is where we got off last week, never got back. Whom we preach, war, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't even read it. Did to whom God would make known what is the riches of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is, here's the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen, Jesse. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can somebody say glory to God? Glory Didn't God. say Christ coming. Didn't say when we all get to heaven. Christ is in us. Glory to God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I and my Father will come in and sup with him, make our abode with him. The new birth is about God living on the inside now. Glory to God. Now are we the children of God. Hallelujah. I said, now are we the children of God, praise God. Not one a day, not coming, not sooner or later. You know, there was that old song about the grassroots, sooner or later, love is going to get you. Well, love's done gotten me, glory to God. And God's already moved in on the inside, hallelujah. Can somebody shout glory? Glory. Glory to God. And then Romans 6, 4 says, therefore, we are buried with him <clears throat> by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we, even so we, even so we, who's the we? Me. Me is we. 
The is we. Thought you were trying to figure out how to make that rhyme, weren't you? Use little old King Jimmy there. We got it done. Hallelujah. Raised up from the dead by the glory of God. Even so we also should walk in newness of life. One, I think one translation says walk in a whole new sphere, a whole new plane altogether. Glory to God. The word life here is zoe. We talked about this before, but we'll just do it again. Life in the absolute sense. Life in the manner that the God the Father has it. Amen? Life, <coughs> excuse me. It's supernatural life. It's life that God has in him, that he gave the Son to have within himself, and the Son had, in turn gives to us to have within us. Life in the manner that God has it. That's the life we walk from. That's the life that's on the inside of us. That's the life that's, that lives, that rises up and puts us over. Can somebody shout glory? Glory. I said shout glory. I didn't say mumble it. Glory. Hallelujah. This is not the first church of the frozen chosen. We're the blood bought. We're the blood washed. We're the sanctified. We're the called out ones. Glory to God. We're the infilled with the Holy Ghost crowd. Glory to God. We got God on the inside. Hallelujah. We need to become so God inside minded that nothing, nothing can pull us down. Because the resurrection life, amen? What did he say? That the, uh, the, the, um, Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of God. Well, what did Ephesians say? You remember what Ephesians chapter 2 says? That we were raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. What's that mean? That the glory that raised Jesus from the dead raised you up from the dead. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Y'all keep sitting there. I might do all Pentecostal on you. Yeah. Ha. Amplified Bible says we were buried therefore with him by the baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of Zoe, Zoe life. That life is habitually working in us. That life is on the inside of us. Man, look, if you want, you can go out there and run in the hall out there if you need to. There's plenty of room out there. Nothing get in your way. Glory to God. See, we're not talking, see, so many believers are still stuck living in the, in the natural life. That natural life is a robber. It offers no future. We know that it's in the natural life that at the end of all things, it comes to an end. We all know that that natural life has a, has a timetable on it. If Jesus doesn't come back, you're going to lay this body down. Are you here? And so when you get caught up in the natural life, when you get caught up thinking about things from the natural standpoint, they're robbers. And I'm going to show that to you. Look over uh, into Luke chapter 8. If you will, this is these are life. Natural life is a robber. What I mean, when you live from natural life, it will rob you. It will steal from you. Luke eight fourteen. And they that fell among thorns, and they which were, when they heard, go forth, and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Are you here? The word life here is not zoe, obviously. It's bios. And it is natural life. Manner of life. You see, the, for the believer to live from the natural life, there are cares, there are weights, 
There are things that choke the word of God in your life and it brings no fruit for it. Now, if you're not born again, that's where you're going to live from. But we're born again. We're called to live in newness of life. We're called to live in the Zoe of God. We're not to live from our natural life. We're to live from the inner man. We're not to let natural life tell us how to live. We're to have our inner man tell us how to live. Amen. We're to let the life of God order our steps. Amen. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Amen. Well, it's not, it doesn't just mean that God has ordained you walk here and you walk there. It's talking about the, the righteousness, the life of God on the inside of you. Causes you to have a different footstep, a different gait, a different cadence, a different path, glory to God. It calls you to walk in that whole new plane altogether, to walk with God, to walk above and not beneath, to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, glory to God, to go over and not under, glory to God. You're not going to sink, you're going to swim. You're going to rise up because resurrection life is on the inside of you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. The life of God on the inside of us overcomes natural life. Yes. Amen. It supersedes natural life. Yes. And so the cares and the weights and the things of this world that enter in and pleasures, the riches and pleasures of this life, We can get so caught up with enjoying this life. We sell ourselves short of living out of that supernatural life. Amen. 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 And see, you, see, here's it. We can get off. We can get so caught up with God wants me to prosper, and God wants me to have stuff, and God wants me to be blessed, that we get caught up with the lifestyle of the rich and famous. Instead of understanding that God wants to bless you, God wants you to have things, God wants to do good things for his children, but not so you can be on Robert Leach's show if he ever brings it back, if he's even still alive, I don't know if he's still alive. <laughs> or his, or his, uh, you know, his protege that comes and starts another one of those lifestyles of the rich and famous, you know? We all think, well, we'd be cool to live like that. Do you not know? Do you not understand? There is nothing on this planet that compares to that which God has prepared for them that love him. I'm not getting a little old log cabin over in the corner of heaven. Oh, Lord, I just need a little old log cabin. See, now we, we, see here's, what happened. here's what happened. We got so goofed up with being humble and out of balance with the word of God and being humble. I don't... All I need is a little old log cabin over in the corner of heaven. Yet the master said, my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember that song you sing in the church. I got a mansion just over the hilltop. Well, glory to God, I got one coming. I got one to wait. But that doesn't mean I can't have good things here. But we got so caught up with having good things here, we forget about there's even greater glory. There's greater things coming from in heaven. Amen. When we finish this course, when we finish this walk. And, and so we started getting, getting caught up in the riches and pleasures of life to the degree it became what? Began to choke the word of God in us. Now don't say, I'm not going back to the ditch over here. But we can't be so consumed with the riches and pleasures of this life that we stop realizing that on the inside of us is greater than anything we will ever taste in this world. Amen. That nothing in this world has to offer is comparing. Is con you can be compared to him. Amen. Nothing in this world can be compared to his glory. Nothing in this world can be compared to his presence, praise God. Amen. Nothing that this world has to offer. I don't, you know, I, we just went on vacation another week. We did something we never did. We rented a, we rented a beach cottage. Um, for the whole family, went down there, and stayed, and I'm going to tell you, we walked out the, the front door on a deck, and they had stairs down, and the beach was right there. Amen. Nobody's house in front of us, no, no lifeguard stand in front of us, nothing. Well, that's fine to, en to enjoy life, but when they become so our pursuit and more important to us yeah. than the things of God, and we become... Everything about us is to make this bios comfortable instead of 
living out of the zoe, we begin to it will, it'll begin to choke the word. It'll begin to put a stranglehold on the word of God, and, like, and it won't produce fruit in your life. Yeah. What God wants us to do, He wants us to live out of the zoe. We can have the other stuff. Yeah. It can't have us, yeah. and it can't be our pursuit for life. As a deer panteth after the water, so my soul longeth for thee, as in a dry and thirsty land. And somebody say glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Amen. My, my graduation uh, message at uh, Raymond in 1981 was preached by Oral Roberts. Not a bad commencement speaker, is it? <laughs> Hallelujah. And he preached on tracking with God. And use the scripture about the hind's feet. And we understand that the hind feet of that animal would come and, and, and land in the same Footprints is the front feet. You know, put down and come back and the rear would come right and get the same spot. Mm -hmm. Where God's to be running in front of us and we're to be right tracking, right in his footsteps. Amen. Our pursuit has to be God. Yeah. Isn't it amazing the message that you heard one time, didn't he have it recorded, mm -hmm. 47 years ago, still has an impression on you. Yeah. Said, the anointing does that. Yeah. I said, the anointing does that. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we're not to live out of that bios. See, when you're born again, the life of God is imparted into you. Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the thief cometh not but for two. Amen. That's a tongue tire, isn't it? Yeah. The only reason the thief comes. Yeah, yeah. That but for two, not but for two means the only reason he comes. Yeah, yeah. Okay? The thief cometh not but for two, steal, kill, destroy. I have come. Here we have the antithesis. We have, we have the opposite. The thief is here to steal from you. The thief is here to kill you. The, he, the thief is here uh, to steal, kill, and then destroy. Well, what happens? See, he wants you to get caught up in natural life. Working hard for the money. We ain't got something. Working hard for the money. You know? Hey, you know, just, I mean, you know, another day, another, I heard something the other day. I said, how you doing this morning? He said, uh, another day, another nickel. Well, I, 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 think, I mean, he was in a position where I could just really, you know, you can't just rebuke people, you know, like, you're thinking, you go ahead, pal. I ain't working for a nickel. You know, uh, Dr. Leroy Thompson's book, Money Cometh, came out of a conversation in a, in a grocery store line one day. He was standing there with somebody, and he looked over the guy and just, how you doing? The guy looked at him and went, uh, well, you know, money comes, money goes. And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's sitting there and he said, the Lord, Lord went to him and went, money comes and money goes. And then the next thing out of his spirit, money cometh! And that's what whole teaching and book came out of, that conversation. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, we, you get caught in the natural world, and they'll start choking faith out of you. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your money. He wants to steal your health. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy everything around you. But I, now the, the word but is not there, but it's understood because it's, it's the antithesis. So I'm going to put it in there. It's not in the scripture, but I'm just going to put it right there because it is about, but I've come, or I have come in an antithetical, in an antithetical statement that you might have life Amen. and have it more abundantly. Now, you know, different translations Amen. say you have it to the full. Amen. But life, there's Zoe. And a thief is coming, and he wants to keep, he wants to keep you in bios. Amen. He wants to, listen, people say, you know, rich people, they, 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 money is the root of all even the love of money is all. You can be dirt poor and have the love of money. Right. That's why people go rob stuff. They love money. Hello. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I have come that they might have life. Zoe. Life in the manner that God had. Why? Because that's resurrection life. It's lifting life. It lifts you up, glory to God. It takes you from defeat to victory. It takes you from poverty to prosperity, from sickness to health, from defeat to victory, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. From being, by, from being the bottom to being the top, glory to God. Calls you to rise up, glory to God. And have it to the full. Man, I just need a little, I need a little brittle clean cream blessing today, Lord. A little dab will do you. Some of y'all remember the old Brill Queen commercials. Yeah, that, my, 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 my parents have been shopping. They brought home Brill Queen. And back in the days, it was in a tube. Almost like a, like a toothpaste tube. My dad worked second shift. And uh, my brother had been messing with him and put switched the boxes. 
My dad got about half of them. <laughs> but it, was, it wasn't mean. It's just my brother. That's what he just did. It just not really thinking. I think he put, put, put him out in the wrong box. <laughs> Ain't one little dab either. You know the tooth the toothbrush is full. <laughs> yeah, Frank, you shouldn't have done that. Anyway, <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know if my sister was watching this morning, but uh, yeah, Frank did that. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah, see, when we get in the, we get around with God, we try to be we try to be you know humble or whatever. Oh Lord, I just need a little real quick blessing. I just need a little dab of do ya. <laughs> Jesus said, "I've come that you might have this light and have it." to the full or more abundantly glory to God. He don't have no real clean blessings. He's got a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over type blessings, glory to God. The blessings that cause you to, to be the head and not the tail. Glory to God. I'm telling you one place, he said this, that we, you know, he's going to take all the blessings of God and throw them at you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. One translation says, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you, glory to God. God's life is where we're to live from. John G. Lake said that, you know, when he went up and, and they had this big, big outbreak of the bubonic plague in Africa, and he, he was already there on the mission field, and an English a medical frigate had come up the river and doctors have got out there going to try to help the circumstance, the situation. And um, Dr. Lake said, he's burying people. And they said, you, you, you can't do this. You can't do this. It's highly contagious. You know, they had on some type of mask or whatever. I'm not sure what they were doing at that age. I know back in the Middle Ages, they, they wore the, 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 the like Grim Reaper look thing with the charcoal in it, you know, to try to, you know, think that would help kill whatever bacteria. I don't know. They may, may, may have been very smart. May have been. Uh, charcoal activated may have done something. I don't know. He but he said, he said, said, why not? They said, this is highly contagious. You know, you need to be, you need to have more special equipment and stuff to handle these bodies. He said, sure, sir, let me show you something. And he, uh, he, he went over and they said, uh, take one of those slides from that microscope and go over there to that, that man. And when they died, this foam would come out of the mouth. He said, wipe that up. Put it under there and look under the microscope. And they said, yep. We want to play against just all that bacteria is all in that stuff. He said, now watch this. He took his finger and put some and wiped on something. Down. Now look at it. And right under their eyes, it died. Yeah. They're just stood back and amazing. He said, sirs, that's the law of the spirit of life yeah. in Christ Jesus, overcoming the law of sin and death. I want you to know this morning that there is a law working in you called the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus that overcomes all the works of the enemy, overcomes his stealing, overcomes his killing, overcomes his destroying glory to God. It puts you over, praise God. I'm telling you, it's at, it's at work on the inside of you right now. That glory of God that raised Jesus up from the dead, praise God, raised you up from the dead, hallelujah, and made you sit with him in heavenly places. And now the mystery to the church and to the world is summed up in these words, Christ in you, the hope of glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. That power of God's on the inside of you. Resurrection life. Hallelujah. The word Zoe there, natural life chokes the word, makes it unfruitful. It is carnal life and the enmity against the word of God and God himself. God did not call you to be a natural being. I am telling you up until the fall of man, man was not a carnal being. He didn't know he was naked. He wasn't afraid. But the moment that he committed high treason and became spiritually dead and that life went out of him, he became a natural being. You know, governed by his natural affections. God shows up and the first thing he does is he's hiding because he's afraid and he's lying and passing the buck. And it got worse from there. But Jesus came. Amen. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest. Well, if the scripture says something like that, we ought to see what that is. Can somebody say amen? amen. For this purpose 
was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. God's life in you this morning, just like Lake said, when the law of sin and death comes in contact with the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, it is destroyed, it is nullified, it is brought to naught, glory to God. The French Bible for 1 John 3, 8, translated back into English, you understand what I'm saying? If you get a French Bible and then you were to translate it, not in King Jimmy, but translate it from how it's written, it says this. For the this purpose was the Son of God manifest that it might bring to naught, or reduce to zero, the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. What happens when you're reduced to zero? You have nothing. Jesus said. Did he, did he say that? Something talk about talk about the devil? He said that he cometh, but he hath nothing in me. He has no now listen, he has no place of authority, he has no stronghold, he has no position in his life. Why? Because the law of life in him. Now the law in us is it's the same law of life, but it's now called the law of the spirit of the, the law of, of um, the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. The thief cometh, but he hath nothing in me. He hath nothing in me. He hath nothing in me. Amen. Paul writes with that. I, I, it's such a triumphant statement to me. For the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. The thief cometh, but he hath nothing in it. Because the same law that was at work in Christ. Remember the Zoe of God that he gave to the incarnate son to have in himself. And his son in turn in turn and gave it to us to have in ourself. That same law is at work in us. Yes. How do you know? Because Christ is in me. My hope and glory. Amen. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Glory to God. It's cheating when I have my notes. I already have the stuff written down. You know, I know because you don't, you don't have all that. But, praise God. I'm going to turn that way. By the time I get there, you should, you should be there. Some of you should already. And my Bible is a new Bible, so it's, it's, the pages are stuck. This I say, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not. Ever say, walk not. Walk not. Walk not. Say it again. Walk not. Walk. As other Gentiles walk. Where? In the vanity of their mind. Let me tell you what this is. Bios. It's walking where you, the cares of this world, the riches and pleasures of this bios are choking the word. And Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and says I, that you don't walk as other Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their mind. Are you here? Have the understanding darkened. Being alienated. What? Now let me say this. What if Paul writes and says, don't walk this way, what does that mean? It's possible to walk that way. Y'all hear you going home. Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated. From the Zoe of God. Now I just put Zoe in there because that's what this word is, life. Through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Paul writes and says, don't walk. Wait, Gentiles walk. Don't walk in the vanity of your mind. What are we supposed to do with our mind? Don't you understand? That's why the Bible says renew your mind to the word of God. Be not conformed to this world. Romans 12. Paul's saying the exact same thing. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Glory to God. Paul's saying the same thing. Don't fall like the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. As believers, renew your mind. Let the power of God's word 
receive with meekness, James says, the engrafted word of God, which is able to restore your suke, your soul. Amen. Live out of the life of God on the inside. Amen. Why not? Why can't we just live like we want to live? Because the bios alienates you from the life of God because of blindness. It's a separator. It's a separator from God's life and the benefits and the effects of God's life. Now it won't necessarily kill you spiritually, but it will separate you from the benefits of living in the life of God. How does Paul talk? Paul doesn't talk Mickey Mouse. Paul ain't over there whining all the time. Paul doesn't have the world's smallest flying limb playing my heart bleeds for you, you know? I mean, Paul, think about it. When you read, I believe in the Second Corinthians where Paul goes in that whole chapter and talks about, you know, in perils in the city and perils in the countries and three days and nights and the just goes on and on and on and on and on. And just dumps all that out there. But you know Paul's greatest, great, how Paul responds to these kind of things? We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He can recant all this stuff. He was, he was writing and saying, you know, you say you're, you're, you're Jews and you're this and you're that. I'm a Jew more. I'm above the, you know, you say you've suffered. I said I've suffered more. I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally brag, I'm going to paraphrase it. I wouldn't normally brag, but just so you could get a kind of a glimpse into you know, what I've been through, here it goes. But then Paul gets to Romans, the eighth chapter. We're more than conquerors. Amen. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. The apostle John writes in his first epistle to the church and says this. Greater is he that is in me, he that is he that is in the world. These men who were filled with the life of God had a different perspective. When they stood on the precipice of life, they look out over the valley of defeat. They were looking at the throne of victory. Where God raised them and lifted them. And as we used to sing, love lifted me. Yeah. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was walking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores. Hallelujah. I'm most, most charismatic. go, what's that? Yeah. It's called a hymn. Yeah. Glory to God. An H-Y-M-N. <laughs> Glory to God. Philippians 2.16. Look over here. I'm telling you, the Word of God is important in our life. The Word of God is necessary in our life. Can somebody shout glory? Glory. Read th verse, starting verse 13. For it is God who is worketh in you. Somebody get the Amplified. You've got to Amplified Classic. Get ready for me. It is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless as sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generations among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, the word of Zoe, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ and have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He calls the word of God the word of life. Amen. So I got to amplify ready? All right, Th verse 13. For it is God who is at work in you, creating in you both the will and the desire to work. To work for his good will, satisfaction, and delight. God's at the work on the end. How's he at work in you? Come on now, you know this by now. The sermon's what? <clears throat> the light that's in us. God's life is in you, and it's creating you the, not, only, not only the ability to do His will, it's creating you the desire. Yeah. 
to work and to will and to do His good pleasure and satisfaction. Glory. To work to honor Him. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. Now you get, get text messages with all the scriptures in there. Hallelujah. Amplified Bible. Not in your own strength. Not out of our abilities. Church, when we preach these things to you, we're not talking about you doing great things because you're somebody or you know, you got to have some intestinal fortitude or you got to suck it up, snowflake, and get it done in your power. Yeah. Not in your own strength. For it is God who is all the, all the while at work in you. All the while effectual at work in you. Energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Yeah. That light in you. This is why Paul writes and says, don't walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind. Don't get so caught up with riches and pleasures of this life. Don't get so consumed. Are you here? Yeah. With all this stuff. Then it chokes and robs and steals from what God's doing in you. Amen. God ain't making you sick so he can teach you a lesson. God's not bringing catastrophe and calamity. Boy, you get those put together, you got a messed up word, don't you? <laughs> Calastity or something, all right. I mean, we just got... <laughs> over here this morning. You run from Bill over down on Jeff. It's not the anointing. You, I ain't gonna let you get away with that one there. Not this morning. Glory to God. All that bios is just bringing all that stuff. But God's at work in you. Everybody say God's at work in me. And God's at work in me. By his life in me. His life in me. His Zoe life. Is at work in me. And it makes me better. I live victoriously. I live triumphantly. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The word of life. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Amen? Amen. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. What does this mean? Every time we apply the word, we're applying the life of God. What law is in the life of God? The law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. Amen. What does it do? It sets us free. I'm going to say something. It overcomes, it defeats, it destroys the works of the devil. The law of sin and death. It overcomes the enemy. It overcomes the works of the enemy. His works are dead works. They rob us of faith. Cause us to accept defeat instead of victory. Which is why we must live from the life within us. God's life is victorious life. It is life that sets us free. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. His life is ours. We are to live from that life. It is resurrection life, lifting life. It makes you a winner. Yep. Yeah. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him. Again, Paul. When you read Paul, you don't come away going, hee-haw. You don't sound like the hee-haw group. Some Christians could try out for a remake of hee-haw and get one part. Glum, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I remember that show. Oh, yeah. And they sang it every week. Yeah. Are you here? They sang that song every week. Saying, where, where are you tonight? Where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over, thought I found true love. You made another and you was gone. <laughs> now we all think that's funny, except people's attitudes in life pick these things up. Are you here? It's 
gloom, despair, and agony. Those are all defeatist. Paul, when you read Paul, you don't come away with gloom, despair, and agony. Are you here? Paul, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, with his triumphant statement. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. If he just said exceedingly, that'd be good. But he said, if he just said abundantly, that would have been good. But he, here's Paul. What? Resurrection life. He preaches from that life. He ministers from that life. That life transformed him. He was caught up into the third heaven and saw things unlawful to be uttered. He saw the new creation being. And now he comes back and writes, Now unto him who can take a dead man spiritually alienated and separated from himself and by the resurrection power of Christ. Raise that dead man back up from the dead and reconcile him to himself by his glory. Amen. Paul writes, wow. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not only make a Pentecost out of you, nothing will. That's enough to get you speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is exceedingly, abundantly able, I'm sorry, not just the end, stop there, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. He's able to, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think. According to the oh, According to what? The power that worketh in us. His resurrection life. That glory of God that is on the inside of us. That is how he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or even think. Verse 21, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end. Paul was giving a, a, a praise. This was Paul's praise report. Yes. I said, this was Paul's praise report. Now remember, Ephesians is divided into, three, into two halves. First half is who we are in Christ, what belongs to us positionally. Last half is how to live it. He, he, his doxology to the first part of this letter is this. Christ is in us. He's our hope of glory. Christ is on the inside of us. We're new creatures. We were raised up with him, made to sit with him in heavenly places. There's a new man there, glory to God. And he's going to sum up, he's going to spend four, five, and six telling you how to live it out. But his doxology to the first half of this letter is now unto him. Are you here? Amen. Who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above. I mean, any one of those would have been good. Are you here? But we got the spiritual tri-vector. You know anything about basketball? Tri-vector, you know, the tray. We got the spiritual tri-vector of what God will do, how he will do it. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think what? According to the power that worketh in us. Glory to God. Look out, devil, here we come. We're going to put you on the run. Yeah. We're going to run you out of town. <laughs> We're going to tear your kingdom down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yep. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said hallelujah. 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 Greater is he that's on the inside of us this morning than he that's in the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He he can pack up and bring all kinds of stuff to your doorstep that you don't have to take it in. That's As a matter of fact, you can run him off. Yeah. Somebody shows up my doorstep, I don't like it, I tell him, get out of my yard. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. We don't have to put up with it anymore. 
the greater one on the inside of us, the life of God on the inside of us. Why are people still living in defeat? Because they haven't learned to live from the word of God, to live from the life of God that's on the inside of them. They'll let, let the devil run rush shot over top of them. Now all the while, they got the victory over them. It's like when the little teacup terrier is coming up and you're running from it. <laughs> Annoying, yippee dog. Now, you might have one. God bless you. I like having a dog. These when it barks, you can hear it. Roof. Are you here? I said, are you here? Yeah. And the devil wants to yip, yip, yip and put you on the run. But I got one thing to say to him. Look out, devil, here we come. Now that's like a marching cadence from the military. We just, you know, took the, we're gonna put you on the run. Come on now. Look out, devil, here we come. We're gonna put you on the run. We're gonna run you out of town. We're gonna tear your kingdom down. Sound of holy, sound of ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Amen. We are the triumphant church. Amen. We are the victorious church. Amen. We are the occupying army in the king from the kingdom of God on the earth. Amen. We are the people of God. Amen. And in us. Is the life of God. Amen. And we live from that life. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. Let's all stand. Glory to God. This morning I want you to make this confession. I am a believer. I am a believer. God's life is in me. God's life, the absolute life, the life that God the Father has, that the Son has, and I now have. Make me a conqueror. Put me over. Makes me the head and not the tail. I am victorious over all. The works, the, the works of the enemy because of the life of God in me. It's in me. It's at work in me. It produces in me produces victory, in victory. victory. All, the all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise God. We bless you. Those who are joining with us today, thank you for joining us. We, we, we just thank you. Walk in the life of God. Renew your mind to the word of God. Let that word of Zoe, that word of life, work in you. Glory to God. So that you overcome and you win. Glory to God. And you're not bound by the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Zoe of God produces life in you and to the full. In Jesus' name. Till we meet again, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh,